Merriam-Webster, I'm sure you're familiar with the dictionary. It was the first to redefine what marriage is to appease the woke crowd and add gay unions to the description. And then it was also the one that redefined what anti-vaxxer is so that it incorporated everybody who opposed mandatory vaccination. Yeah, so that dictionary, well, they've decided to kind of outdo themselves with a new term that they're adding called fourth trimester. And I know you might be saying, well, that can't be what I really think it is, but it is. It's a name that they're giving to the first few months of a baby's life in order to basically um, make it seem a little bit less than human, a little bit less than real, a little bit less than um, alive. So they said that in a press release that this was, quote, part of a worldwide cultural awakening to the importance of this stage of life, unquote. Now, is that really true? Are we going through a worldwide cultural awakening? Are we recognizing the value of human life in a new and unprecedented and positive way, as they sort of imply? I don't think so, because later on in this same press release, they said that the word trimester implies that the baby is still a fetus, and that is intentional, they bragged. Why would that be intentional? Well, because the brain and the nervous system aren't fully developed yet, they tell us. And therefore, it's not really a baby, and it's a lot more like a fetus, a word that they're using to try to kind of dehumanize the baby in the womb. And I think it's really important that we pay attention to the sort of terminology that they're using here, because when they say that it's not fully developed yet, that that person isn't fully developed yet, well, that's exactly the same argument that they use for all abortion, correct? I mean, including for late stage abortion and so on. It's that very argument that the baby is not autonomous enough and therefore is not alive enough and is not developed enough and therefore doesn't have rights and isn't really a person and so on. And so when you've had people who have been talking for many years, in some cases for decades, about the kind of slippery slope arguments in relation to abortion, when you say that the baby isn't developed enough and therefore doesn't have life or rights, um, well, here we are and we're beginning to talk about the fourth trimester. And so I don't think it's a topic that ought to be ignored. And when it comes to these arguments about whether or not we're having a cultural awakening in regard to the value of human life, I really think that we're going very much in the opposite direction. And that's particularly disturbing. I, I actually wrote an article recently, I'll, I'll link it in the description, about the fact that some autopsies are being used for entertainment purposes in various parts of the United States at this point. That's sort the sort of view that we have as to the intrinsic worth of the human life and of the body and the, the fact that we're marginalizing it at this point. That's the direction that we're actually moving in. And how about the argument nowadays that a person should be forced to take a medical treatment if it's for the value of someone else or for the collective? Is that actually a, an argument in favor of the value of human life? Not really, because an argument of human life would be, well, not just a numbers game. You can't just kill two people to save three and call it morality. That's not morality, it's sociopathy. There is no morality that denies the sort of intrinsic worth of a human body, of a human life, and that's the direction that society is going. And so you kind of see it at the beginning of life in the abortion arguments and also at the end of life with how increasingly we're treating um, bodies and men in, with things like, um, acid baths and so on, and public autopsies at, at the very end of life. It's the fact that we're increasingly denying the human life, the human worth, and the dignity of man over time. And we're moving very steadily in that direction.